Millwall, a team that's been through it this season, being not too great in the league, losing manager Gary Rowett and appointing Joe Edwards. Today we've got to make it better for the guys at the den. And do you guys want to get some kits like this one, an insane replica? For great prices, visit Soccer Deal Shop. The link is in the description below. And if you use MWS10 in the checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As the objectives for today are going to be a little little bit different, of course. The main one is there of the UCL. We've got to win that one, as Millwall do have a little bit of an old squad. So, the rule is we can't sign anyone below the age of 30, but we can keep the current players here. Only two rules, because that's quite hard. So, we don't have to get rid of a lot of players. We do have old players in the squad, but... The reason I want to keep the young ones is because I want to keep Zian Fleming. And I do want to put him in his favoured position. In cam, so we've changed to, yep, a very stereo stereotypical formation on this game. We've got Bradshaw on the wing, but Kevin Nisbet is going to be our striker for now. We've got 7 million, and that's with contracts to pay. However, look, signing 30-year-old players on more is difficult, but then again... It's cheap. Do I expect to get promoted in season number one? Not at all. Do I expect to use this academy? Well, unless I can get an academy player through at 30 years of age, I don't plan on promoting at all. There might be loads of signings in this. As I was right, it is an aging squad. Bielkowski won't play, even though he's the oldest and leading by example. And yeah, we've got to get players older than Joe Bryan, who's 29. I thought he'd be older. Same with Duncan Watmore. And I didn't realize literally how cheap it was. Until now, I said cheap. But this is cheap, cheap, cheap. Sound like a little baby chick right there. As Martin Dubravka. Under 3 million for Martin Dubravka. Yes, he's 34 and he only signed a one-year contract. That is going to be an issue as well. Old players won't want to stay around for long. They've got retirement plans in the Maldives. As the second one as well that we've signed. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's a brilliant player for the championship. He does love living in London. So, Willian... He went over to literally retire in Brazil, I believe, then came back for Fulham, and now is in the championship with Millwall. And there we go, Willian straight into the team, because he does play left mid, unlike Bradshaw, and that team has two very strong players in it. Mental. Mental, as it hasn't given us a preseason. To be fair, that will break the bones of all the old lads in the squad. So it's on to Stoke and the Gary Rowett kind of derby. Both teams having him as manager as their team. They've got Wesley. Talk about Premier League stars making the move to the second division. Really didn't work out for him, did it? As we win the first game. And does Willian score? No, but it's a brace from Kevin Nisbet, who will outlast Willian. So that's good. First game of the season. A 3-2 win. Not the saves Dubravka should have made, but I'll take it. And this, this is quite decent. So thank you, Willian. And Dubravka must have improved. Millwall in the playoffs and for once. Four ones in FIFA or IRL. Leicester are struggling in the championship. And yes, I'm taking fifth as struggling. They should be higher up as we have Southampton in the cup. That'll be us out straight away. The Mariners have Bournemouth. Come on, lads. As this is how the team looks as well. To be fair, some of the original players getting the rating up, including Cooper, should I say, and Zian Fleming. This man is going to be a star and with us all save. Also, I would have... I would have liked to say the same for McNamara, but an injury, it's not looking good. The reason we went into the season very quickly is because you can see by the budget, we have nothing left, even though we signed literally two old boys. And yeah, they still do cost money. It's not like the free. And one submitted a transfer request to Bravka. Behave. What about goals? It is Nisbet top, Bradshaw second, both strikers with seven. Longman has six, the lone boy from Hull. Shame that. I'm going to keep hold of him, but we can't sign him up because he's 23. Zian Fleming with six and three assists. And Willian? Where is Willian? He's even getting played. He's there. 14 games, zero goals, but three assists. I don't know how to feel about that. And I tell you what, this is a pretty good first season for the challenge that we're doing as well. If we get to the Prem, we'll be able to sign better old players. So, let's give it us all. We're in the playoffs. Before we see the team, that is the lineup. It's us versus the Saints, West Brom versus Norwich City. Championship. It was just a squeeze, though. Two points over Stoke, of course. Like I said, Garrett. Garrett? 
Gary Rowett kind of derby that, as Leeds United won and Leicester, of course they recovered. I get bored of them teams that are near the top, as this is the team that we have. To be fair, Dubravka's only gone down by one, and he has signed an extension to his deal. Very good, as Fleming 76. Nisbet is 75. I did not expect to be seeing that. Still very inconsistent with the ratings. We've got three or four, should I say, Premier League quality players. And then the rest of them are just there and thereabouts. As uh, statistically speaking, we have Ryan Longman, who is the top scorer on loan. And we can't have him back. But then again, Nisbet in under half of the games with only three less goals. Bradshaw with 12. Fleming with 10. And our left back, Brian, with 9. Willian did get a goal as well. Get in there. He does start because he's still his best left midfielder. As after the first game... 1-1, one, one, but we've got a man suspended. If we could beat the Saints, though, that would be some achievement. And I tell you what, Zion Fleming with the brace, the man I said he's special, it could be an automatic promotion straight away. Automatic in the fact that we're doing it straight away, not automatics, because we're bloody in these rotten things. Hate playoff competitions. Oh, and it's Norwich City. i rather play these than West Brom. Don't know what to expect at all. We have our suspended man back. And Nisbet, alongside Zian this time, gets a 2-0 win at Wembley. We stay in London, and we don't stay in the championship. Millwall, with only two signings, have made the Prem. This is better than I expected. We rebuilt Ipswich, had a terrible first season. Bristol City, even worse. But this year, finishing sixth, Caesars go to the top league, and I never showed the FA Cup. We didn't do too well, I don't think. Nope. But we don't care. We lost to Southampton. We beat them in the playoffs. And now we go to the Prem. And here we go. Premier League football. Season number two. Do we survive? That is a question to ask. We're kind of sorted with a striker. It is... It is right back. Centre back. Left back. Centre mid. And Willian needs replacing again. Yeah, I don't think we're surviving. I don't think we're surviving. A couple of players transfer listing themselves. Of course, we're going to get them straight off them lists. And we're going to get a lot of players signed up in the Premier League. Damn it. They're going to expect higher wages. Money-wise, though, 43 million. That's not much for a promotion. Not much at all compared to saves we've just done. However, however, old players, like I said cheaper and i reckon if we just really smart about this and get a team in that is around the 75 mark we're gonna we're gonna try and survive we can't afford 80 rated literally i've checked three and four millions are the best rate to go at so matteo distiglio from juventus and then from wolverhampton johnny we've got our fullbacks and one big center half that should be going to munich anytime soon in real life we've gone ahead and signed Eric Dyer. Because there we go. We've got more of a Premier League defence right now. And Cooper stays as captain, leader, legend. Let's move just one up to the midfield. Or actually left mid. That could use an improvement. So staying in London, like we've done with a lot of signings. Jeffrey Schlupp, or must have just made the move away. And he's a little bit more expensive. I think he's just on the board. A 31 years of age and 76 rated, so... Consider that a good signing. I consider that a good team. If our midfield just gets going a little bit, we'll, we'll be fine. As money-wise, we've still got nine million to spend. And do we actually try and get a bit of a better player? But no, I've not been able to find anyone of that quality. Because contracts. I forgot to do them completely. So we've done them and we've signed the final man. A man that was linked to Forrest a lot. It is Anastasius Bacasetas. Might have got the second name right. He joins from Trabon Spore and that's looking a lot more like it. One player under the rating of 75. We can live with that. Surely this team's worse than us. Surely. I see Chef United. Please be Luton. No Luton. There is Leeds, Fulham, Leicester. Mm, no Bournemouth as well. And our first game is Wolverhampton. Okay, not the worst start. At least it's not one of... One of the big boys. We need to put everything into beating teams like this. And I know it's harsh saying that as the players can't get their sharpness up. Of course they can't. They've just come out of the care of. Just put it in, lads, please. Oh, <laughs> we have looked out against the odds. We had less possession, but the same amount of shots. And it's Zian Fleming. The Premier League is where he can really, really shine. And that's what we need from him. Starting as we hopefully mean to go on. 
a win against Wolves. And before we check season stats, calendar or anything, we're just looking at the team. We've got 79 raters. Of course, Nisbet and Fleming are going to keep on growing. Same with Cooper. But the man I didn't expect, Eric Dyer, Bayern Munich's own. If that transfer actually goes through, as we are sat 11th in the Premiership. How is this even happening? It's Leeds Wolves, so it's a good job we beat them because they're the worst team in the Prem. And Everton, who are down there, 15 points, we're on 23. We are the best team in the world. The cohesion is unmatched. Looking back at the calendar, ooh, there's, there's a couple of 1-0s in there. I see three away 1-0s. Scrap that. Make that six. Saw draws with Manchester City and everything. As stats are the thing we need to check. We've got absolutely niche in the bank. And they are the ratings. No one over 80 yet. I think that could be a move for next season. We've got eight goals from Kevin Nitzman, the flying Scotsman. Zian Fleming, of course, helping out. And I knew that the last signing of Bakasetas would make a little bit of difference. Do like him, as Winger's getting involved as well. This is a very solid squad. And this is absolutely fantastic, because we have finished there, not even halfway through, come full stop, come the end. We are 11th with Millwall. Do you know how big of an achievement that is? No offense to Millwall fans, but in this kind of save, where you can't sign players that are going to grow, it's Sheffield United, Leeds and Leicester going down. Sorry to the Yorkshire clubs and Leicester. FA Cup won by Burnley, so we know we can still do it in there if we put it in. We lost in the quarterfinals to Man City, and the teams in there are beatable. And the game can't even handle it, because it's just crashed. It cannot believe we've survived. So some of the ratings have changed, some of them haven't. At least Cooper, Fleming, and Nisbet, our normal players, have kept going up. Same with Honeyman. Don't leave him out, and Eric Dyer. He just absolutely loves to grow. Bayern Munich's finest. And getting promoted with old players is hard. Staying in the Premier League is even more difficult. But now moving up when the players you can sign aren't too great and the budget probably isn't too big. That's a struggle. I don't know what it is just yet. And we've got Middlesbrough in this league, so hopefully we can just survive again. 34 million. 34 million is so stinky. At least we're getting 80 rated players, and um, plus that, of course, right now. I need to go back and check the team to see which position we need to sign in. It's midfield, and then it's definitely left back, and goalkeeper is an issue. We've also got the left wing struggles, but I don't want to just buy left wings every single moment of this save. So in order to survive, we're going to have to dip into the free agent market, and I am so sorry. To Millwall fans in what you're about to see. I wanted to stay so far away from West Ham players. So far away but Ariola, 80 rated. A free agent goalkeeper who's younger than Dubravka. We kind of needed him. And there he is in the goal. I mean, we've got a good triangle at the back now. That's all right, I guess. And we could even add to that. We might have to change the formation. We might have to go to a three at the back because this free agent's massive. You could tell who it was. It's Nathan Ake being released at 30-year-old bang on. Perfect whoop up. And to get everyone the right rated in the team, of course we've got to change to a formation like this. I don't even know what it is. A downwards pointing arrow, I guess. We need a midfielder and we still need that left-sided player. Or, to be fair, Schlupp can already play there, but... He's not good enough, is he? And we've gone ahead and, well, kind of turned this into a bit of a free agent save. We've got the left midfielder. Still potential to grow in him. He used to be good on FIFA, I think. Bruma. There we go. He's in on that side and he's very quick. I mean, he'll have to be quick running up and down that kind of wing. And to be fair, with Bruma signed and three of them being free agents, we still have 27 million to go. And damn, we have just spent 10 million of it on an old player, but... A player that should be good enough for us. Wataru Endo from Liverpool. I'll take that. That completes everyone in position. Honeyman, why aren't you? Uh, there we go. He is right now. We've got an 82 rated Nisbet now. Still an 82 Ake and a squad that's looking a lot fresher. Mm, and we've gone ahead and signed one more player to try and be better than last season. So that's the 17 million done and dusted. Welcome to the club, Juan Jordan. I'm probably saying that completely wrong and he's just been squeezed over the line. And we're testing this formation against Manchester City. Of course, we've got it tough this season. Robertson, Bob, 
They're underestimating us still. Howard Bellis is pretty decent in the championship as we do get a goal through Wataru Endo. But they do beat us. And I don't like that they've beaten us because they were a bit cocky putting a young lineup in. However, worked. I can't really argue. We've just got to put it in in the other games. And does the downwards arrow mean positive correlation? It kind of does rating wise. We're getting a lot towards 80 rate, and Dyer keeps on growing. Ake's just turned 30, so yeah, he can still grow, and goalkeepers last for longer, so Ariola is 83. May hurt Millwall fans to see that he is the highest rated, but he's joint with a few because we've got some 80 rates as well. 83s already. I'm not going to check stats because that might ruin the position that we're in. As we are sixth this season. We love improvement. Oh yes we do. Millwall are absolutely on the charge. And this formation. I think I'm using it every single time from now on. Not even joking. Something magical happening here. As the quarterfinals. Oh not the quarterfinals. But the Carabao Cup in general. We lost to Swindon. Brilliant. FA Cup. We've got Wickham. I'd love to get a cup run going. And a lot of good results this season, but a lot of bad. I do want to see where we finished in the table. We move up. We move up. Millwall fans, pack your bags. You're going to Europe. And it's not any old Europe. It is, of course, Champions League football. We might have knocked West Ham out of the Europa League. Yes, by finishing above them. 74 points. We were three points off. Winners of the league, Arsenal. And you saw how many defeats we had. We had 10 defeats. That's unbelievable. We are working wonders. Wonders, I tell you, as you can see. The Wanderers are in the final and they've lost in the final to Arsenal in the FA Cup. We didn't have our luck there. Rating-wise in the team, everyone is above the rating of 80. Some 84s, some normal 80s. And of course, I don't expect them to grow over that. We've got Zian Fleming at 86 and Nisbet at 85. Looks like when you're the only youngish players in the squad, your potential rockets past them. Even a decent player on the bench, Dinore, who's been here from the start and maybe he goes in for Jordan soon or one of the other two 80 rated. This is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Now, another point I haven't touched on. We have to watch for players retiring. As you can see, Nisbet is actually turning 29 or 30 next, should I say. Give him an extra year off there as he did turn top scorer. He only played 21 games. Maybe that's why he didn't score many start of the season. Maybe he's had an injury as Bakasetas has done well. Duncan Watmore's done well, but he's on his way down. He's 32. Bruma's done all right for himself. Dinore off the bench and then goals from his centre-halves who are his best players. Now... Time to get more attacking and attack the Champions League. And looking on day two, it looks like Dittore has actually left, but we've kept everyone else in the starting 11. That's all I care about. We've got to add to that, and we've got 99 million, right? Finally, we utilize free agents. We utilize, of course, really good old players we should be able to improve quality drastically. We're looking for bang on 30 year olds, of course. Ake and Daya were just that. Same with Ariola, he might be 31. But that's why they're still increasing. That's why Jordan isn't. Endo's gonna one. Yeah, it looks like bang on the age of 30 really still gets growth. And we're not gonna be shy spending the money. The first one, we couldn't find a good 30 year old. So we've gone 31. And you think you know who that is? Well, if you've played a lot of career mode. Otavio from Real Sociedad. I mean, Champions League experience coming to the den. Him on one wing, Bruma on the other. We've got some speedy Portuguese as this man is world class. I couldn't keep Ariola for long. So we shall be selling him to get funds. And for 20 million, Thibaut Courtois, he will do the business. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Adding them two to the team. Him and the defence in front of him, including Captain Cooper, will be glorious. It's now midfielders we need, and this man's going to be the most expensive of the lot. Another Champions League player getting outside of the bounds of realism now, but, I mean, Millwall are in the Champions League. I can't really speak, though, being a Grimsby fan, but Atletico Madrid have sold him in it. Not him in it. Goretzka. He can tell who else I wanted to buy. We can give up on Jimenez now, though, because this man's cost all the money in the Husky Chocolate Kit. 31 years of age, but 85 rated. Down to 10. Down to 10 million. And to be fair, that can go on contracts for the players that will want to leave next year. Every contract signed is short term. So we've got two or three decent players on the bench now. But Goretzka and Courtois will have to sign up again. And that 
is a solid looking team. And our first game of the season is recently promoted Everton. Unlike us coming up, it's them who have just seeked promotion. And that's the look at the team without everyone international playing. Everyone's back at the club and ready to give it their all. They've got a regen. They've still got Delhi Alley in their lineup. Elise is a good buy, especially to keep him in the championship. As of course we win, Nisbet carrying with Goretzka. And that man Zia. Glorious scenes right there, and it's a good start to the season as well. Of course, with our overpowered squad, we've got a 90 rated in there, and the group, it's Bakasekas' old team, Trabonspor, Benfica, and Barcelona. And halfway through, look at the state of the squad, and I say state, it's bloody good. It is better than bloody good. I'm liking it very much, but I am not liking the league position. We're 25 points deep. We have eight wins, ten losses. That ain't good for how how stacked our teams become. Are we through in the Champs League? Is that going to be our be-all and end-all? It might be. We've got to try and beat Bayern Munich, however. Difficult challenge as we finish second in the group, only to Barca. So, Bayern Munich, I mean, Harry Kane, but a young midfield. And Hato is going to be very, very low rated. Surely he hasn't got that good so far. 79 rated at most. At most, as Millwall, Millwall are the underdogs, or the underlions, should I say. We've beaten them 3-1 at home. And surely, surely we're through right now. There is an injury to Endo, and it took penalties. They did come back, but Millwall kept the nerve. We are fighting like lions. Nisbet and Honeyman with our goals. Doesn't really matter who scored for them. Game might be remembered on their side. But we're the ones going through. Win on penalties in Germany as well. That is a tough challenge. And to celebrate our win, we are looking at signing someone for the only time outside of the window. Because to beat Juventus, we need another man. We've beaten one giant powerhouse, but I don't think we beat another. Plus Endo's got a huge injury. We've beaten them as well. Oh my. So here we go. We're getting Kevin De Bruyne. That should bolster our hopes. Even though we're doing well without a main man, we've gone ahead and signed the man who's just come back from injury in real life. Wow. We have an issue, though, if, if anyone spotted it. Um, yeah, that's the issue, having them two players in the same team. But as long as they can just stay away from each other, we should be good. It's all about seeing Juventus off at the moment. And if we do, we're a semi-final away from the final. And it's took extra time this time. No penalties because Otavio and Goretzka got the job done for the boys. And looking at the semi-final, it is BVB that stands us in the way of PSG or Inter. The circle blue badgers are on top, it seems. And these surely can't be harder than Bayern Munich, can they? We, we should be beating them. They've got a good team. They've got a good team. I'll give them that. But so do we with the addition of Kevin De Bruyne. But it's Goretzka. Goretzka's the main man for us at the moment. The ex Bayern Munich man sees us in front in Dortmund. This is a glorious position to be in. I have the German kit on and we're playing all the German teams and we are beating them all to reach the Champions League final. It's, I, I thought it was the worst squad. Now, granted, it's actually quite good. We've got a 90 rated in there. We've got De Bruyne. We've got Zian Fleming on full potential. As it was Fleming and Honeyman who scored in that game and how have we got an almost 90 rated Kevin Nisbet? That is what potential does for you, folks. I wouldn't have it any other way, as it's Inter we face in the final. PSG have been knocked out, but Inter must be good to have done that. I want to see the Premier League, though. That's the most important thing, or it's not, because we're not prioritising it, and it's showing. We finish 11. Stinky. Really stinky. As Villa and Tottenham in the final of the FA Cup, we were nowhere to be seen. I think we had Wickham, and I've just seen Wickham through. But it's final season, one of the world's best in Courtois. And yeah, I've been calling this team bad a lot. It's very good. We've got Nisbet going to Manchester United. Man United fans, would you take him in real life? Ariola, I know was agreed upon. Liverpool, I sold him actually. Because I thought I'd have to afford De Bruyne's wages when I signed him outside of the window. I got it a little bit wrong. But we'd earn money for next season from Ariola if there needs to be a next season. As Kevin Nisbet got 32 goals altogether, 9 in the Champions League, phenomenal. Goretzka was Mr. Champions League, 6 in the Prem, but 7 in the UCL. Bruma did well, Fleming, 
Vaka Seitas, but it's all about the team's cohesion now in the Champions League final. So let's go. It was the Olympus Stadion, I believe. That is either Atletico Madrid Stadium or... I don't know. I'll be completely wrong if I say someone else's. It's going to be a difficult game. Lataro Martinez, is he over 30? Is he still at Milan? I didn't want to see how they actually ended up beating PSG. All I care about is beating the team here themselves. Eric Dyer must have had a phenomenal career with us. And this team as well. We can't underestimate how slow it may feel. Maybe the slowest gameplay you ever see. The Portugueses... Should be all right on both wings as Otavio does have pace to actually beat DiMarco and cross the ball in. It's a good ball and it's a very point blank save. He didn't see that coming, did Castiles? And we're going to take a shot corner. Castiles is another good old um, goalkeeper as Juan Jordan hits a man. No hand involved. Ake to put it back in the danger zone. Maybe Otavio as he's been good. Headed away, Bastoni. And I want to see Goretzka flooding forward like he has been doing. Oh, Jonathan David. Eric Dyer in the way. Honestly, Eric Dyer. What a man. Otavio. He looks like a quick outlet that we've got to use. Maybe we shove him up front. Honestly, he may benefit from being there. As I saw a graphic in the top corner. This is the 200th game in charge. Good save, Courtois. So, Millwall fans, that means after 200 games, Joe Edwards should have you in a Champions League final, if this speaks any truth. As Bruma, is he pretty quick? He, I don't know, but he's definitely not good at passing. Got to go to Bruma's side a little bit more. Lataro Martinez, Jake Cooper. Oh, Eric Dias panicked a little bit. Too slow again, but a cracking tackle. He makes up for it, but a corner ball to come into the box. Zian Fleming. With the header away, Otavio just goes through his man, basically. Ghosts like he isn't even there. And Bruma, Bruma to run away. Could we? No, we can't even squeeze that through. Come on, we need to be a little bit better on the front foot as well. We haven't seen Nisbet actually touch the ball, I don't believe. And that's an easy ball through to Lataro. No, Jonathan David, no big save, Courtois. A man we can rely upon because he's pretty decent, Illich. No, don't let him put the ball in it. Straight across the deck, actually. And there's Nathan Ake making a pass out straight into Bruma. Counter-attack. I mean, we're pretty old. We're pretty, well, very slow. But can we do it? And we looked like we would have done. But half-time goes. Honestly, I think I'm aging watching us pass the ball about. I'll be 30-year-old at the end of this game. As here's Jonathan David. Easy pass into Jake Cooper. Nice. Courtois and Cooper linking up right there. And now... We need to get the ball going. Goretzka's not got as much involvement as I would like. Looks like sitting in the middle of this formation really pushes the player to sit back as Otavio. Good speed. This is good. He's definitely our best player in this game. That is some skill into Zian Fleming. Good save. Otavio is phenomenal. Brilliant player. And De Bruyne, come on. You need to be like your old best because I haven't seen much from him. Nor any of the midfielders now. Daniel Mallon is being dealt with though because Nathan Ake knows him well from the Dutch team. And we might have a little bit of a break here. Another Dutch player for us is Zian Fleming who didn't go to the ball. De Bruyne gets it passed back into him though and KDB finally working his magic. Zian Fleming in the middle. Nisbet. That's a good pass back to him and a brilliant save from Castiles. And Baruma can't direct it. Easily the best chance of the game, that. And we should have scored from it. Barella, no chance. Oh, my days. I thought they'd robbed it. DeMarco smashes the post. They haven't been too cracking themselves, honestly. They, we've been slow to react defensively, but they haven't done enough attacking to warrant the win. We have Otavio. Dink that over the top. That looked to be hitting Fleming. Nisbet is offside. Is he? I, th I think he was so close, so close, and such a shame we didn't get it, but still, we'll keep on going. Otavio, this is working. Nisbet this time. Bruma, Bruma is on a run, and Bruma has just absolutely bottled it in the 87th minute as well. I didn't even realize what time it was on that clock. That was shameful. We'll still keep on going, almost through. We've actually turned into the better team, and don't you dare. Don't you dare, Daniel Mallon. Don't you dare, Courtois with a save. They could have stole it at the death. We could have stole it with Bruma. But it's going to go to extra time here. Damn, this has turned into a good game. I don't care how slow you kick it. I don't care how slow we move the ball around. We only have to put the ball into the back of the net. It seems like we've got a physical team. And Bruma 
actually using a bit of an acceleration. He must have had his Lucas Aid at half time. Here he goes. Other drinks are available. Ball back into Juan Jordan. Can we get it back out wide? Enough of that. We need to be a bit better than that. Lataro. Oh my days, he could have switched it into Jonathan David. Oh, Cortoir. I thought that was a goal. I thought that was a goal. Brilliant ball whipped in as well. Okay. In to still have it in the bag to try and win this. Or they have it in the bag to be able to win it. I mean, they're missing their chances as well. DeMarco should have scored at the end of the game. De Bruyne now. Can we just pass that back in, Otavio? Nope. We've definitely run out of pace if we hadn't done already. We should be pretty good on penalties, though, with the likes of Goretzka and De Bruyne. And it might be heading that way. Still nil-nil. As let's get going. Come on, mean business. That's it, Juan Jordan. Get in front of your man. I love to see... The urgency. There's a run here from Nisbet. I don't know if he has the pace. He is on the end of the ball, however. And that's a good one in towards Zian Fleming. Good defending, Bastoni. Fleming touches it down. Kevin De Bruyne has maybe won it right here near the death. How has he powered it that much? It wasn't even a driven shot. But the man we signed just before we got into the quarterfinal second leg has done it. I think the man from Belgium loves his chocolate and does it for the team sponsored by Husky Chocolate. That's a lifetime supply if I've never heard it or seen it before. That is a brilliant goal as well past his Belgian teammate in Castiles. And KDB might have done it for us. The magic man of Millwalls. Just keep, oh my days, keep it tight at the back. They've jumped around us. Just defend this. Suleiman DA. What a save, Courtois. And a corner kick. Courtois done well. But then again, sometimes he has missed the ball. And it's just us relying on the post. That's a handball from Dumfries. If they do get it back. Or the advantage went very, very quickly. I want to talk to the officials after the game. Even if we do win. Which it looks like we should be doing. Courtois whacked it up. We have won the header. Experienced heads. Winning headers. Barella still. But the whistle has gone. And Millwall have done it. They have, against all the odds, only signing aging players. But the veterans have lifted the dragons from the den. The lions from the den, sorry. Two. Champions League glory. That is one fantastic goal as well to win it. But De Bruyne is not my man of the match. I am, without a doubt, giving it to Otavio. He was ripping it up on the wing. Eric Dyer is a mention. And of course, big Jake Cooper, who's been here all along, like Fleming and Nisbet, not hit the headlines, but hit the sky with the Champions League in his hands. What a brilliant achievement. If you do want us to do your team next, maybe not in the championship now there's been three in a row, comment down below and it may appear.